Jump buffering is a game design technique that makes it easier for players to execute a jump when they land on the ground. The concept is based on the fact that executing a jump at the exact moment a player lands can be difficult, even for skilled players. Game engines are extremely precise and can tell when you're not on the ground even by a fraction of a second. Jump buffering gives players a period of time before they hit the ground during which if they press the jump button, the game will register the input as a jump and execute it as soon as the player touches the ground. This technique can be particularly useful in fast paced games where timing is critical as it allows players to execute jumps quickly and accurately without requiring absolute perfect time. Okay, so let's jump into the project and the first thing we're going to do is create a variable here that we're going to call jump buffer. Um, it's a bool and it's going to be set to true. Okay, it's Isaac from the editing room here. I've set this to true by default, but it absolutely should be false. I was going to set it to false later on in the episode, but that got cut. So this is my first and final warning. Please make this false. The next thing that we need to do is create an export variable and we'll call that jump buffer timer, It'll be a float, and I'll have that set to something small like 0.1. Okay, so jumping down to have a look at our jump right now, we're saying if action UI accept is pressed and jump available, we're gonna do the jump, but we need to refactor this a little bit for this to work. So I'm gonna create a jump function. It's gonna return void, and I'm just gonna simply cut and paste the two lines that are currently underneath UI accept and jump available. And I'll paste them into the jump function and just remove the tabs and write uh, where it says UI accept and jump available. Actually gonna split that check up. So we'll say if action just pressed UI accept, and then we'll check again if jump available, we'll take out that section of code and we'll replace it with the jump function that we just created. Okay, so now that we've done that, once we've pressed the jump button, if jump isn't available, we want to set the jump buffer to be true. And that'll be set to true, but next we need to create a timer to set that back to false. Uh, it needs a callable, which is just a function. So I'll come down to the bottom of the script and I'll create a function called on jump buffer timeout, and it'll also just return a void. And all we need to do inside of this function is to set the jump buffer to false. Okay, so we can start writing our timer. So we'll go get tree, create timer, and we'll need to pass in our jump buffer timer. So I'll scroll up and I will grab the jump buffer timer and I'll come down and I'll paste that in the create timer function dot timeout and we'll connect that. It takes the callable, we'll pass in our on jump buffer timeout. And what we need to do, if in the period of time where our jump buffer is true, we need to check when we hit the ground. If jump buffer is true, we need to go into a jump. So after we're checking if not is on floor, that's our gravity. Else we want to check if the jump buffer is true. And if it is, we're going to jump. And of course, we'll set the jump buffer to false right after that. Okay, great. That's all we need. P press play. And you'll notice that as soon as I play, my character jumps. That's because obviously the jump buffer is set to true by default. Definitely change that. And yeah, let's have a look. We are jumping. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to blow it up. So you can see as we slow down, jump pressed is true, but we're not on ground. We hit the ground and we're jumping. And that is jump buffer. And it is something that really gives a lot of responsiveness to your game. It makes a huge difference to the input for your jumps. If you've got jumping, you need to have this is as important as Coyote time and all those other things that we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. Alrighty guys, that is how you do jump buffering in Godot. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to jump onto that like button and subscribe as well. If you're feeling extra generous, you can join us over at patreon.com slash shaft games, where all my videos are posted early and top tiers get access to my FPS Pro template, which actually doesn't have jump buffering. So I should stop talking and go do that before I post this video. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.